Today, we'll be making chloroform. FBI, open up! I've been having trouble sleeping lately, so I thought, well, maybe I can use this to help me. First thing that we're going to do is actually make a drying agent. I'm using magnesium sulfate, which is just Epsom salt I got at my Goodwill, and I'm going to dry it in the oven so it can become anhydrous. <laughs> You'll need some bleach and you'll want to get a pretty concentrated solution. The one that I have has 7 to 8% sodium hypochlorite, which I checked off of the SDS on the company's website. You're going to want to dump out about 100 to 150 milliliters of the bleach so you have room to add the acetone and so that you can actually mix around the mixture. You're going to want an excess of the sodium hypochlorite, so I'm using about 90 ml of acetone for the 3.57 liters of bleach. A lot of people will make calculations on how much to use. Uh, I'm not Nile Red, so I'm not going to do that. Another important thing is you're going to want to chill your bleach to a very low temperature, as in maybe around negative 5 to 0 degrees Celsius. This is because the reaction between acetone and bleach is very, very exothermic and it will release a lot of heat. In case you don't understand, heat equals bad. The cap is put on and everything is shaken around to mix all of the solution together. Once you're done shaking, make sure to leave the cap loose to allow any gases to leave the container. You do not want an exploding bottle. Now, let's go over the mechanism of this reaction. The hydroxide ion removes acidic alpha hydrogen from the methyl group and gives enulate a nucleophile which attacks the halogen atom and forms a halogenated ketone. This is repeated two more times until a trihalogenated ketone is formed. Now the hydroxide ion acts as a nucleophile, attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and breaks the double bonds of the ketone into a single bond making oxygen anionic. Displacement of trihalomethyl leaving group and reformation of double bonds between carbon and oxygen results in the formation of carboxylic acid. A acid-based reaction between the trihalomethyl anion is protonated by the carboxylic acid, which results in the formation of a carboxylate anion and product, chloroform. Yeah, get the guy with the speech impediment to say all that. When I checked the temperature after only a couple minutes, it was about 18 degrees Celsius. I just accidentally showed this in Fahrenheit. You should let this reaction run for about 12 to 24 hours. I only let it run for about one to two hours. The reason for this is I want to show you the difference between the time frames. Chloroform is a lot denser than water, so it's going to sit on the bottom of the bottle. You're going to decant most of the upper layer, but make sure you do not dump it all into your waste container. As I was dumping this out, I got this incredibly weird smell and I started to freak out. Normally weird smells in chemistry is definitely a alarm sign that should be going off in your head. In the next clip, you'll actually hear me cough and run out. <coughs> At first my brain freaked out and it's like, oh my God, this is phosgene. Though phosgene really degrades from chloroform, so a fresh batch of chloroform really shouldn't be that. But then I realized that the oven that I was using to dry the magnesium sulfate was new and it was the weird oven smell that was going on in the garage. You don't even know how relieved I was to figure that out. Anyway, we're going to take a one liter beaker and we're going to pour out the rest of the bleach and chloroform solution. Now you'll notice that my bleach solution actually is kind of yellow and cloudy and that's because I didn't let it react for the 12 to 24 hours. What I'm showing you is about a one to two hour reaction and really this is not the most efficient way to do it. If you take a look at the bottom, you'll see that there's an immiscible layer. That is your chloroform layer. It's a lot more dense than the water, so it goes all the way down to the bottom of the beaker. We're going to decant this even further. We're going to try to get as low as we can near the bottom of the beaker, and then we're going to put it into a separatory funnel so we can separate the chloroform from the bleach solution. Also, please do not judge me in the next clip. I actually forgot that my separatory funnel was open and I started pouring immediately. I really don't know how I missed it, but it's definitely there, and you're actually about to hear me say something. <sighs> Mother...
What we want is the bottom layer between the chloroform and the bleach solution. Now you'll also notice that the bleach solution is very yellow and cloudy. This is just because of the unreacted products. The things that you see in there is magnesium sulfate. Um, I just put it in there because I thought it would go to the chloroform layer, but I'm kind of stupid and forgot that it's not as dense. We're now going to add the anhydrous magnesium sulfate that we made earlier, and we're going to dry out the chloroform just in case there's any water in there. It was then wrapped and set aside so I can actually show you what a reaction of 12 to 24 hours actually produces. We actually had to get a new bleach DLC just because I accidentally froze the other container, so I had to get another brand. I actually used a smaller container, about one third the size, so I used about one third the amount of acetone just because it was about the same concentration of sodium hypochlorite as well. Just like before, all the steps are going to be the same. I'm going to shake it up, make sure everything's mixed together. But this time, we're actually going to allow it to react for 12 to 24 hours. Now, I think I ended up doing about 36 hours total, but you really don't need to go that far into it. I actually struggled to get this cap off this bottle. It was actually a really big pain to get it off. But make sure that it's not fully down so the gases can escape. I checked the temperature again after a couple minutes, and it did not go as high as last time, as this one was even colder than the last one. I decant it again, and you can see that the solution is a lot more clear than the previous one. This is because everything should be fully reacted and fully gone forward as we use an excess of the sodium hypochlorite solution. After I decanted most of the top layer, I put this into the waste container, and the next beaker that you see me fill up will be the rest of it with the chloroform. Again, chloroform is a lot more dense than the bleach solution, so everything should be on the bottom, ready to be separated again in the separatory funnel. Please do not judge me for the actions you're about to see right now. This is definitely the worst way that I could have set this up. Just like before, we're going to fully drain the bottom layer and collect that into a glass vial. And then we're going to add anhydrous magnesium sulfate to fully dry the chloroform. Once you've collected and dried your chloroform, you're going to set up a simple distillation so that we can distill the chloroform over. My distillation looks exactly like this, but it doesn't need to be exactly like this. Anhydrous magnesium sulfate was added to the round bottom flask just to make sure that everything was dried before we distilled it over. A funnel was placed in, and both sections of the chloroform that we got were put into the round bottom flask to be distilled over. The funnel was taken out and the glass stopper was put back in. Once heating was turned on, we want to wait until it hits about 60 to 62 degrees Celsius, and we're going to keep that portion of the chloroform. Aluminum foil was wrapped around the apparatus just to insulate everything and make sure that we can actually get it into the condenser so we can condense it over. Chloroform started to boil, and we start to see the white fumes to slowly travel up the round bottom flask. Make sure to discard anything that goes below 60 to 62 degrees Celsius as it's going to be cloudy and not as pure. As you can see, the first section that we get is nice and cloudy. 
what you're going to want to do is put this into a waste container and discard it as we're not going to be using it. After discarding the first portion, we can see that the liquid is now clear and relatively pure chloroform. Here is the final amount of chloroform that we got. And it's actually really cool when you look into the liquid, it has a really weird refraction that's different compared to water. As for our yield, we actually hit a perfect 70 milliliters of chloroform. Everything was poured into a glass bottle with aluminum foil wrapped around the bottle. This is because we don't want any UV light because phosgene production can happen as chloroform degrades. 1.5 milliliters of absolute ethanol was added to the chloroform to prevent the formation of phosgene. I mean, it was just used in World War I as a biochemical weapon, but who am I to judge? All of the bleach and containers washed should be dumped into a waste container. Sodium hydroxide was added to the waste container to destroy any of the chloroform left in solution. You can see here that the solution is extremely basic. 